shift them. Yeah. And where do you, do you, did you want to do it next to that? No, one? no. I just wanted to know the way of everybody else. That wasn't rude, though, was it? I just thought if we didn't end it, we'd. No. Well, my, I don't know how the car park thing works because mine runs out at two. The, their 24. I don't know if I'll get charged after that, which I'll be, after that. I'll be fine with, yeah. like, you know, a couple of hours or whatever. Yeah, I, I am still here. <laughs> Shift that there and catch you guys in audio. Hello. Do you want us to clear some stuff off the table? Oh, Okay, we're just upstairs on the same level where we were last night. You know where they sell all the stuff. It's it's the next floor up where the Costa Coffee is, and then you go round and we're in the bit where we did the signings last Tell night. Tell it to head to the IMAX. Yeah. All right, man. See you. All right, the IMAX floor. Yeah. That was last night. That was very good, wasn't it? After the screening or during? Both. <laughs> well, I get very anxious. Um, very anxious. And I was sat right at the front, and I could feel everyone kind of just watching me. So I kind of ducked out for the... <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> were. You yeah, you it? ducked out, well, yeah, They were dishing out free beers um, just around the corner. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep popping in, and then anyone that walks out, I'm going to get them. Yeah. And I, what, I, do you think? Yeah. what do you think? Yeah, well, I was kind of going, where, uh, where are you going? It was all right. Give me another answer. And I stayed because my wife is the first time she's seen it, probably, since we've done it. She's in it? Oh, yeah, and she's in it. No, so she's got to see her body die. Um, <laughs> no, I think, do you know what? She she said what she loved about the scene on the big screen was that um, she was amazed at how much was in there. And I think that is, it's the one thing you forget. Films are great on DVD and on screen. I mean, it is brilliant, but it's a very different experience. That's Going it. to the cinema is a wonderful thing. Man. My, uh, my... Uh, mum and brother came to watch it and it's the first time they've seen it on the big screen and they were over analysing and they saw bits that they hadn't seen because obviously they've seen it throughout the whole thing, oh, what do you think of this bit, what do you think of this bit you know, as just ordinary uh, film goers cinema goers uh, it's nice to get their kind of views on it yeah, because you, you don't on, the on a small critics as well. they are yeah, the like, biggest critics like, and they spot the boom and the crew <laughs> member standing <laughs> in the background <laughs> there is a boom shot in it is there a boom shot in it, where? Oh, no, I don't, don't, don't tell me that there is, don't tell there me is. that, no, there, no, no there's a boom shadow oh that's alright during one of the most intense scenes and no one sees it but of course I'm like that carried it was, away it was like a seagull's head or something <laughs> yeah, it was. in a boom lit shadow Exactly. <laughs> 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 yes, I remember the film when it was called The Myth of Hopelessness. I remember yeah, it. And I saw that. It's like Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. And then all of a sudden, it's like this film called Broken appeared. And I remember Mrs. Craig going, what, What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the title changes happen like that. Yeah, they, they forced us. Yeah, they forced you, our hands. Or, or hands were twisted. Yeah, I, yeah, they do I, love I, title changes. I, t- I understand. Um, it's a good job I just didn't get a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, At least they just make a film called January now. Yeah, I, I, love I, I love the title because it's like, you know, it's, um, it, it was ambiguous and it was like, um, it, it kind of went with the film and then the, the whole outlook of the film. It's kind of like, it was a unique title, it's a unique film. I understand why they changed it to, but well, they, they asked us, didn't they? They said, we want to change it to more of a single or yeah. the something. Or yeah, and we did offer up a few it. suggestions. And they, no, they, they, Broken was ours. But yeah. they, they let us choose the title, which was great. Yeah. You know, they didn't come out with something crap. Uh, or, you know, not Broken. Like, not Broken, yeah. <laughs> The myth of Not Brokenness. Disabled, you know, yeah. something like that. <laughs> well, that would have went down well, wouldn't it? I don't know, you could do a yeah. job called that. Yeah. Uh, well, exactly. So they let us choose uh, the title, which was, you know, it was, it was good. And I think title and, and Broken really works, especially with the imagery that they've got on the poster. And, yeah. Yeah, it's it more, I mean, the myth of hopelessness is memorable, but it's, you say that wrong, you know, it's Well, I think that's the thing as well. And also, there's, there was a bit of a double negative in it, in the way that that's what they were saying. It felt a, a kind of a double negative. Mm. I, don't, I don't, didn't quite get all of that but I, I kind of I can see the thing that the, there's almost this um, it, it, it's neither here nor there either as well as it it was a little bit promiscuous and a little bit you know that's all lovely but it's bullshit but <laughs> what, what they're doing is what they're doing is they're saying right 
one word, we can quite easily put that on a poster yep. and yeah. on a DVD case. And it's B. It's B. So it's at the, like, <laughs> it's at the, the top. top. The top yeah. end. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's. I, I get it. It's all about sales and all that stuff, and it, it is easier a title to work with. Um, Which is why our next movie, A Broken Car, a broken is really car. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to pick up. Yeah. <laughs> Fixed. But no, it is. It's all about it. Pretty much every British crime film that comes out seems to be getting renamed Hooligan. Yeah. At the minute. Yeah, There's a few of those course. where even the filmmakers are like, we hate the title, but we want to sell units. So, yeah. You know, I was yeah. speaking to an actor the other day and he was not impressed with himself. He said, this is two films in a row that were called that. And now they've got Hooligan in the title, so I don't want to be known as the Hooligan. And person. most of the time they've not even seen the film. No. You know, the, I mean, film, film sales is a, is a dark, murky underworld. Isn't it? The well, it is, and I, but I think I think this is I the thing: it. is that yeah, you, you do have to that they will get your film out there. You get it seen, and actually, if your story's good yeah. and if the content is there, then you will get you know you'll capture the minds and the imagination of the audience, and then they'll do the selling for it as well. And and people, if there's a, a quick quirky title, people mm-hmm. will remember to go and yeah. get that. If there's a good image, if there's a good to back it up, yeah, they, they all of that kind of stuff, it works. But it, but that's it. It is a huge, there's a lot of cogs, you know, turning this big wheel. And yeah. so, you know, you've I mean, just got to do your story well. The filmmaker is the biggest thing to overcome is, is the fact that it is actually, although it's your brainchild, it's your baby, it's your film, it's not your yeah. film. The minute you kind of sign the option, yeah, the film gets taken away. Okay, so you can work with the event. I mean, I was lucky to have Craig on that side of things, so we could work it together. But the minute that that happens, the film's the film's not yours. And this has come up in conversation recently, hasn't it? Mm. Because of yeah. people that we've worked with are uh, so um, kind of dedicated to the script. It's theirs. It's like oh, I'm not going to change a thing. And and I mean, I've certainly had it through other things that I've done when they want to change the script, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's my favourite don't scene. Don't change or, it. And you know, please don't change, change it. But the, the, the minute that that happens, it's not your film anymore. You know, and. They know their jobs. Usually. Film sales guys, they, they, <laughs> yeah. they know what they're doing, they know their jobs, they've sold uh, hundreds of films. But I think it's important You've to have a, a sense of detachment from what you have because your ideas, yeah. although they're strong and they're, and they're, they're great, you, you, know, you never end up with the film that you wrote. The, the concept will always be different to the script. Mm-hmm. The script will always be different to what you shoot and what you shoot will be different from what is edited and what is edited will be different from what goes out there. Well, you know? the and and right. that's how it should be. Comedy. Yeah. Not comedy. That be- good film. Never saw the comedy. Exactly. It's, and, it, yeah, and, it, and it should evolve and it should grow. And actually, if, if you can remain detached and not suppress you actually can receive some really good influence and, and learn a lot. This is, I think, what the biggest mistake as a filmmaker you could make, even as an actor as well, you know, in whatever level, is that you think you know it all. And as soon as you do that, you cut off so much. It, it, it is a collaborative industry. It needs collaboration, and, and it needs that because it is a big, big cog to turn. And, you know, and I don't know how we forget that. Maybe it's just because if we have a bit of success... You then think this is it. I can rely on this. I've done it now, and, and you see time and time again actors, filmmakers, directors going under because they just re-emulate something, and then it's not as good. It's like you the know, Shyamalan thing. He's probably the perfect example. Uh, Comes out of the gate amazing. Yeah, another couple of films really good, and he's like, I know what I'm doing. Everybody can all sod off and then. You know, yeah, it's it's collaboration. You know, it's, and I found it incredibly useful uh, working with Craig on developing the script. Because, I mean, I think you said in the q and it went to some weird places. Oh, and And we just had to bring it back to what we actually liked. We stripped it right back down. Yeah, we did. And thought, right, we've got to keep this more simple because the, the, the audience is going to be trying to process this, everything that's going on with Evie and John and everything. And then we had, like, <laughs> we had, I don't know, some seedy, like, uh, like the, the case manager played by Patrick Toomey. But, uh, we had him <laughs> like selling DVDs. Yeah, he was living in a shed at the bottom of the garden, <laughs> like like videoing it, videoing her and, and sell, selling her selling videos. Stuff. <laughs> and like, it's like crazy <laughs> shit. We were, but like we, we kind of kind of woke up the next morning thinking in, in separate rooms. Yeah, right. Yeah, honest. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of thinking, did we actually? Was that real? Did we yeah, dream that? <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. The moment where we went, were we actually going to go that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was we actually were. A, a, a serious like twenty-four hours. It was, if I remember right. It was. But do you think, like, that 
10 years, 15 years, or whatever, your watch broken or estranged or whatever, and you go, I would have done that different. So you're gonna. I do it. I do yeah, it, I straight do it, away. I do it now. Yeah. I do it yeah. now. You know, had you know, if we had more money, if we did the, if we, but broken is is what it is. Mm. It's a. I can look back at it and and, uh, and proudly say that it it only took 17 days to shoot. You know, and we're getting all this great feedback, great reviews. People are loving it. We did what we set out to do. Yeah. And, so, it, and we were very much in the moment of the film. So you know, if if you had that same script again, but you had say two months and. Uh, quadruple the budget it would be a very different movie completely different style this stylistically the approach everything the performances would be different so actually you you can only have what you have and yes hindsight's a wonderful thing but that's what i think that's what is special about that is that everybody knew we only had this amount of time because the house was for sale so we were never going to be able to do reshoots no there was no there. yeah well <laughs> it did sell while midway through so um and and that was it. We were like, okay, we get one chance and one chance at this. Let's let's make it work. And luckily, everybody. I mean, every member of crew was on there as well. It was amazing. But as again, I mean, I've only ever really done low budget. But it, I think if I had a, a bigger budget, yeah, okay. So you can have all the big fancy cranes and all that shit. But low budget filmmaking makes you think twice as hard as a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like, like working on thirty five. The shot. Where the you know the the overhead. I mean, I've not um, seen it yet. So okay. Not, no spoilers. Okay. No spoilers. The overhead shot um, towards the end, uh, which was, which you know we had to have that shot. Yeah. But we had to knock that shot up. We could we couldn't just hire out you know the, one of the big fucking cranes or so. We had to make that an hour grip. Mr. Dunn. Yeah. Carl Dunn. He, he, I mean, he crapped himself because he was like, I, I, I don't think I can. So you can do this." And he built this rig, which was in. Incredible. Yeah. But looking back on that, me and I think you know, in a week or six months or whatever, you're going to look at that shot and go, that's amazing. Yeah. But if yeah, you yeah. just Man. got your checkbook out where they got No, exactly. Like, eh, and that was the thing, it was very resourceful. Yeah. And, and weirdly enough, that sequence, the end sequence, which we'll, again, we'll not go into it, but um, the that, that sequence was storyboarded and was one of the very early things we had. Adam Prescott did some great storyboards for it, didn't he? And then we got a track from Hide and Beast that I was listening to totally off kilt it had nothing to do with the film at first and I heard this track in it and then set of Sean when we got in the um, that we had this little office set up at, at uh, Brooke's mum's house so she let us live in there and, and start the production there and we had the storyboards on the wall and I said play, play this track and we listened to this track and watched it and, and that that scene came alive didn't it so then we got in touch with the band Hide and Beast and said can we have that one track then we listened to their album and we were like can we now can have, we have the, the album? album? <laughs> and then, can you be in the film? And then they came into the film. And so all these things were just happening because everybody was connecting to it. And we sent them the script, and they liked the script. And it was just—it was a real collaborative, bloody enjoyable well, experience. I mean, I'm a great um, fan of scores, and I think score builds up like it's got to be over half. It makes makes like fifty percent of the film. You know, uh, so we had we had the the stuff that Hide and Beast were doing, which is. Uh, like ordinary pop songs um, but really cool which kind of I always kind of see that as that's the music that, that John the, the tetraplegic in the yeah. film he um, that's the kind of music he'd be making yeah it could be yeah. his band dark lyrics happy melodies yeah yeah exactly but I also had two composers um, Daniel Dolby did all the atmospheric stuff and Sid the dark stuff and then Sid Barnhorn did uh, did all the emotion stuff and, I, and that was great because I had um, uh, I, just, I was giving notes to Sid about the emotion scenes, bringing like the Evie and John theme together and twisting it through the film. And then Dan was coming out with this um, atmospheric Fair stuff. stuff. I mean, that that in itself was brilliant. And, and I had that we had the score ready before even the film was finished. Mm. Um, so it was that kind of collaboration was, and it's something I'm going to continue to do, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it was does fantastic. It, does it make you feel comfortable doing it that way? Rather than it brought every scene body. alive. Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, I mean, I've known Sid was going to do the score for uh, one of my other films, and, and Dan is, is a lifelong friend, and is just insane at uh, music manipulation and sounds. And well, He is incredible, yeah. I was a big part of the sound production. I went down to see the guys uh, recording the Foley. And, and him and Sid had never worked together, though, had they? No, they never. So, so well, they were still working 
kind of separately but together because I, I needed them quick, you know. to kind of do the separate things and not kind of have too much interaction together because I needed this completely separate side because the film is an emotional journey which is where Sid came in it's also a real dark intense psychological thriller which is where the Dan stuff came in and all the strange sounds and shit yeah it works it works so well and if the score doesn't pick up any awards I'll be absolutely shocked because those two do an incredible job yeah, yeah. you can download it anyway now at least well we're working on it I'm working yeah. on it with them both because obviously they've got, they've got to release it all together yeah so. yeah of course so it's coming out uh, end of the month, isn't it? 24th? Yeah, digital. 24th on digital. Uh, I've not seen a DVD release date for it, is that? No, not yet. I think not we're, we're just waiting to, waiting to hear, yeah, but obviously you can yeah, do your pre orders on iTunes. That's Happy days! Like 24th of October. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. So, I mean, you've. A, it's a film, but you were a carer as well. What's it like watching the film knowing that it's not 100%? Stuff. Well, that again, that was something you know which that. which um, attracted us to the story is the fact that, and again, other stuff that I've done, I always like to bring like, like a like a reality to it. I'm one of the ones that kind of sits in the screen going, you know, that that wouldn't happen. Why would you do that? That just wouldn't happen. So the caring stuff, and and Majana being a carer as well. So I stood out, had all these bits left over from when I was a carer, like the um, like the like the, the, the leg bags and everything and so I just thought one day I'm going to make a film of this shit I really am <laughs> so I had all this stuff and uh, I gave uh, Bodie Shaw's the production designer a big long list of stuff to go and get um, and yeah that's that's one thing I can say, say that's exactly what I did I mean it was an amalgamation of different clients that I've worked yeah. with uh, but yeah the, the, the caring side the, of the things, worst of the best of them <laughs> the, 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 all of them yeah <laughs> the worst of the best of them yeah and you know slightly stretched <laughs> just cover up so nobody knows who's yeah, yeah exactly but, the, but that's one thing we, we absolutely wanted to show you know him um, struggling uh, to, to go to the toilet because I mean I know you've not seen it so every aspect of the film is kind of like their struggle and the monotony of the, the, the day to day care work of Majana her route to, to, to John's room and her route to the bathroom and the house and the way the house kind of sucks you in and the sort of claustrophobia that was one thing that we that we said this is this is how this film's going to work and how it's going to work well is if we show that stuff because normally a film would gloss over it and kind of go oh you know a, oh no there's a little bit of poo oh my god yeah, cut away from it but we not. see everything in this yeah, you do we see, see her putting on the leg bag putting on the sheath um, on John's penis you see, you see the lot you know because we just didn't want to shy away but that helps the film because you're watching something and you're kind of thinking I shouldn't be watching this this is like a taboo subject I shouldn't be watching this but I'm strangely intrigued at where we're going and that really helps towards the kind of intense intense drama of the film and then the audience come out broken hence the title yeah yeah <laughs> but I saw somebody describe it as the most it's either the most authentic or the best film about the caring industry that they've seen I think yep. that was a tweet that got that was a tweet that yeah, yeah a lot of carers yeah, yeah, oh, no, really kind of, and try the best. we had there was a ton of carers yeah. there that all came to me after and said thank you like give you hugs and stuff yeah. finally yeah. thank you for showing our side of the story because it's uh, one hell of a where, where do job. we buy a shotgun from yeah. I hear them <laughs> no <laughs> yeah you can cut that out <laughs> <laughs> So what would, I mean, I was looking at your filmography, I love your filmography, because to me there isn't a Craig Conway does this type of film. You're all over the place, and I love it. A comedies, um, how to stop being a loser, mm. which I think was the first film that I saw you in in a major role, that I recall. I'd seen you in Our Friends of the North, and yeah. I wasn't aware that there was a Craig Conway back then, because I've started chatting to Dominic Burns, and I'm like, oh, I've not seen that Dominic Burns, and you were in it, and Martin Kemp and whatnot, I yeah. love that one. Um, so there isn't a definitive. No, I've been quite thing. lucky. Is that on purpose or is that just a happy accident? No, uh, uh, when I started off, because uh, I was kind of Biker Grove as a kid and doing little bits on that. Well, you know, I was, yeah. On your that no, I know it. I know it is, yeah. Well, it's, it's, but but you know, I was in all these little drama groups and and I used to do a lot of local community theatre sketch shows, all that kind of stuff. 
So by the time our friends in the north had came, I'd been working in theatre, doing theatre and education and all that kind of stuff, and devising theatre and physical theatre. And then, predominantly, from our friends in the north, that was the bi- the first big TV show I did. Mm. And then, in theatre, I was I was doing a lot of classical theatre, so I was doing a lot of Shakespeare, and then a lot of dance theatre, and then a lot of multimedia theatre, and I was playing like George Orwell, uh, you know, Winston Smith, all these characters, Mercutio, and and so in, in theatre I was getting a lot of varied stuff. And at the same time, there was a big film thing happening up in the northeast because of Neil Marshall and so and Sam McCurdy, and we were all doing shorts and experimenting together and doing all this stuff. And, um, and so this little community grew, and it was purely by the fact that a lot of the directors came to see the shows. They then started offering me little bits and... And fortunately for me, I managed to not get chucked into one little box, yeah. and that that was quite nice. Uh, and, and it is very fortunate. Now, at the time, it was a bit of a curse because a lot of things that I wanted to go for, I wouldn't. Producers wouldn't see me, and directors wouldn't see me because like, well, he can't be in this type of ab- role. Absolutely, and 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 I think I had to get to know people in order for them to go, oh yeah, you can do this. Mm. But as you, as I'm getting older, obviously, I mean, I, I do end up playing a lot of villains, but. There's always a bit of soul to them, I think. Yeah. And then, I'd love to do more comedy, I've got to be honest. You are, yeah, I would I love to do other that. Other than how to stop being a loser, I can't think of <coughs> major comedy that you've been in. There probably well, are a couple that I've not seen yet. No, no. Stag do. Stag do, yeah. Stag do. Probably because it's not funny. Oh, there could be that, yeah. Which is why I'll never be a romantic lead. Well, people have described it. If you look at his IMDb thing, I don't think he makes it. I think he goes on his IMDb chart boards with all these usernames. People are like, he's the nicest guy ever. Yeah. He's amazing. I went to drama school with him. If you see him telling this, that, there's so much praise. Oh, Normally really? on IMDb, it's like, I haven't even oh, looked at that. Actually. Go and check him out. It's like about five, six threads. I was on there. There's oh, one of people nice. like, lovely glow. If you look at it's like, it's like, Is it you? It's like Craig Is mom. It? Sean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me mum. <Yeah>. Craig. <laughs> Uh, Craig, 1965, 66, 77, <laughs> yeah. but it's, normally on IMDb there's so much hatred on there, yeah. but his chat boards is full of people going, oh he's amazing, oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. which is cool, it's nice to see. Yeah, it's nice, I don't, yeah. I don't which know. makes him a great producer, Yeah. because, you know, I mean, th- I think the, the levity on, on the set for Broken is such a dark film. You know, we had so much fun making it, which yeah, sounds no, kind of odd. You think, you've got ev- to do you think it, everyone's yeah. going to be depressed? But as soon, as, I mean, we've got we've got I think a blooper reel that for Broken is quite. I mean, it'll obviously come out at some point. Yeah, uh, we've got a blooper reel of, of him and Majana just absolutely <laughs> hysterics. <laughs> and you know, but as soon as the cameras are on, it's a completely different thing. Silence on set, mm. um, and for Craig to to wear so many different hats on the production as well. Is, it's incredible. It's incredible to see, but especially for me as, as a first-time director. Still sounds odd. Have you yeah. got used to saying that yet? First-time filmmaker. You know, yeah. like I direct movies. Yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've kind of always been um, a director. I've just never had an official release. For, yeah. You know, uh, and, and it's weird. The industry treats you differently now that you've done your first feature. Oh my God, he's a serious filmmaker. He's done a film. Yeah. You know, and it's that moment because you are not taken seriously whatsoever. Uh, up until the point you've done your first feature, which is down to this moment, um, and believing in me, with with again, it was his first film that he solely produced. He's mm. been a um, co-producer. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, this was you know this this was this was the one. Yeah, it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it really yeah. was. I mean, to have someone to have so much. Fun, I mean, every now and then we'll be on set. I'll be behind the the monitor, and, and you'll have. <laughs> and you think, ah, okay, okay, so we're running a little bit late. <laughs> but you wouldn't fucking go, get in here, you're running. You got the first AD to do that. Yeah. Well, was he ever running late because of his scenes that he was in? Or that would be a bit of a conflict if you actually were late because of me. Again, it was an, it was an incredible. Um, I did lose the plot one day, didn't I? You, he lost the plot, uh, yeah, because I think. I was, it was, it was Harvey, the day wasn't we, it? we had the intense scene with, yeah. with Dougie and Craig was really struggling to, 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 to get down to that dark side where he's been before. And the uh, setup the setup level. was taking time and, it, and he he had missed the call from his from his son before he went away. Yeah, he's going on holiday. And we really had to bring him kind of down and say, look, you know, it's we really need I, I felt awful because I said we really gotta get this scene. <laughs> So use your energy, use the energy, and you know, 
It was a proper director thing. It was, it? yeah. It was. But, but it so was like, great. We want to get seen, but it really helped. And you see it on his face yeah. in the in the scene where it's a scene where you've got the genre up yeah. against the wall. Um, and you you really see that that anguish in your face, and that that came across brilliantly, and on the big screen. Oh. It's one thing that, that uh, my brother mentioned that you see every kind of uh, you see everything in his face, every bit of pain in his face uh, on that, and that is just through that, and that is through him having that little bit of a meltdown. Well, that I day. did totally have a meltdown, and I, mean, I had to do that horrible thing where everybody kind of went okay, and then we come back, and then I went. <coughs> I'd just like to say sorry no, for sorry. Uh, that yeah, person. He did, yes. Yeah, but say, but everybody... apologise in front of everyone, yeah. which, which, you know, you would never usually get it. So, well, you know, just... Shut up, yeah. 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 And, well, the, you know, the, it's funny because there's always conflict. There's always going to be conflict. It doesn't matter what film you're doing. But but obviously, there, there's a, a point to it as well. I think a lot of, a lot of directors think that producers are trying to manipulate or take away from their film. And the one thing that, luckily, working with a director like Sean is, he's, like I said, because he's not just precious, he's very precious about what he's trying to do and his vision. And I would never step on his vision, but he's very clear about his vision. If you're clear about your vision, you should be able to collaborate with anybody. It's when, when people don't know that becomes a struggle. When they, when they go, I've got a great script, and, and the producers have bought into the script, and they've invested in the script, and the investors have put the money there, and all this is happening. The crew's turned up to do their work, but then the director kind of can go, oh, um, not, sure. not really sure where I'm going with this. Yeah, so then know. everything slows down, and then people start getting pissed off, and then you start having to really put on the pressure. And sometimes you'll either fold or you'll grow from that. And, and it's a very delicate line, but it, it's something I think everybody has to be aware of. If, if I'm wrong, I go to people, even as a producer, I, there are about three or four people who I'm turning to at every time to guide me as well it, you know there isn't the book doesn't stop with me but ultimately you have to make a decision at some point to say the film's not going to get done if we don't do this but when you don't have the trust between the director and the producer that's very hard and for us we we definitely had a very open dialogue all the time and we had our moments didn't we but it was really and we could laugh them off and we could just go well we've had that now let's move on then and it, and it was great you know but it, it doesn't happen all the time but you know, thank God. That's I've got a little bit of 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 a little yeah, I mean, why not? It works so well. I mean, you know, we've seen many of these collaborations. The Cohen brothers. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, one of yeah, yeah. I'm kind of not saying he's definitely DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, too I'm, old to be DiCaprio now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't got the teeth. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll take Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, there you I'll, go. I'll yeah. But we work. We worked well together, and a lot of people have said, "You know what? There's, there's something here. There's something that we can that we can take forward, and we can that we can well, sell as a brand. You know, let's let's get you guys out there because Broken wouldn't have come together unless you know we did what we did and we worked together. And we did everything together, slept on the set together. You know, and and that intense ten weeks that we had, we were together all the time. So. Uh, you know why? Why spoil a great thing? Yeah. You know, so we will go on. No, definitely. I think I think there's definitely, definitely going to be another something comedy coming along. So sure. it's got to be. It's got to be. And and also, you know, we we were very lucky because when um, uh, Chantal Tawad invested in the film, Kirsty Bell basically gave us this green light as well. You know, she really supported us, and we went in there with a very small film and they, they got the money and they turned it around from 52 hours we asked for the money and, and we asked for less and they give us more and suddenly they give us this opportunity which we'd, we'd both been waiting for for a bloody long time so so we practiced it with many other people we tried to get so far and you know things don't go the way you plan and then suddenly we were in this moment of we've got the money let's just do it and we had no other focal point apart from let's tell this story and how we're going to do it and, and it was 
I guess if somebody had said you've got 10 weeks to go and do that you wouldn't be able to do it but because it was like just go and do it and see how quickly you can it just took 10, it weeks. Just took 10 weeks and and yeah I think that's why it works so well I think so, so, that's the open schedule to it really but we knew we couldn't schedule for too long because once you do start scheduling you realise you've got no money hopefully you'll get to the finish absolutely so I think we probably worked for about four weeks or five weeks first nobody was really being paid we were just doing the work and getting it prepped and getting it ready and then there was an official prep point which was only two weeks anyway the official prep wasn't it the, yeah. the actual well, it, it on was, the house we spent like a week just kind of going huh yeah and then like a week of intense prep and then we were shooting yeah God. and that went quick it went very quick but yeah. to, to have that green light is, is makes oh, it because you know it's amazing I mean it's, it's I mean, I, my, uh, my project, uh, I was going to do a project called the Fourth Reich, was, was greenlit so many times. You know, and greenlit normally means you're going. Yeah, you're yeah. going, you're doing it. So, you know, and, and it, it was stopping and starting. And, but this time we kind of had the green light and I was, I was happy to work, working towards something I know was going to happen because I had so much trust and faith in Craig. Because he was like, phoned me and said, I, I don't think I've got the money. And that was like a few hours after deciding we wanted to do a feature, like 52 hours. Yeah. Uh, and he sort of, I was like, oh, I think I've got the money. Because is it true that you said, I want something to produce, and you went, was it you that said to Sean, do the short film, or did you go run with it? Was that? Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah I'd, I'd asked, Sean said, do you want to be in this as an actor? I read it and went, I want to make it into a film, and he went, well, if you want to make it into a feature, you produce it, and go and get the money. And then I went, all right. Come back to me he you didn't come back when you got it. And then I went to Kirsty, came back and went, we got it. And he was like, what, it's been 52 hours. I was like, I know, we're making a feature. <laughs> he was like, shit. So then that was it, we just but dove in. I mean, it wasn't just that. I mean, it, it, literally the budget doubled, didn't it? Yeah. Because we were, we were at, you were asking for 50K. Yeah. We said, we can do this on 50K. And then the next thing is like, right, I've got the money, but yeah, we got a bit more. Yeah. I didn't yeah. get fifty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's incredible. It was I, I was I was just doing a, a, a an ordinary day job, and I was yeah. at work planning most of it at work. Uh, and so yeah, he phoned me, and it's like that moment. And then all the conversations after that was after that was, do you want to get Majana? Yeah. yeah. Do you want this? Do you want that? It's like. And it's like right now we've really got to seriously start turning this thing into a feature. Yeah. But it wasn't. We didn't have to add anything. We just had to let it breathe. Yeah. Just extend it and open it up a bit. Um, yeah. It was. It was a. It was great. But even then, you still question it. You know. You you think because uh, well, I think we call it the ATB. You know, actually tasting the bacon when you're on set with the buddy, <laughs> and that's you wait for that moment because e- even even on the first day, I remember when the cameras were coming. And we were, you know, you see the kind of Panavision truck and all them turning up and cameras getting unloaded and things being dropped off and you're going, oh, wow, okay. I guess it's real then. Yeah, and, and Carl Where's actually, who turned out to be a brilliant grip on, on the film, Carl, the first day I remember when he came into the production office and went, yeah, I can't work with this equipment. And I went, well, you can't or you won't? And he was like, no, well, you know, I mean, I can, but oh, all right, okay, so you said you can now, so you're going to have to. And it, but all these... You know, there's always these things of people trying to do the best they can, and so they want the best of, of everything. But when you're on a tight budget, you you can't just do everything and anything. So you have to find these alternative ways, and and that really, if you buy into that, which everybody on that set did, they bought into. We're not here for a paycheck. We're not here for is this film going to make awards or do anything. We're here to tell a story, and the story for all of us we bought into. And that, that was how we selected a lot of crew. Have you read the script? What do you think of the script? And what are you bringing to it? And and that, to me, is is the way you should work. You know, um, I think too many people turn up thinking because there's a name in it, it's going to be a big seller or it's going to do this. Where's my Winnebago? Bagel? Exactly, you know, yeah. It's yeah. a sleeping bag and your Pringles. <laughs> yeah. well, Every, you know, which was. It, it is. Um, you know, for, for a director and a producer, we're, I always say that, that, that when you do a film like this, we're down here. And all the crew and everyone else are up here because yeah. you've, you've literally got to ask people to do their best work for next to nothing. Mm. So I, you know, I'm not going to be one of these directors to go, oh, and shout at everyone. 
Um, it, it just doesn't work like that. You can try. Yeah. Um, you get self thought, don't you? Yeah, you just kind of get beaten up. Pay else to show to Someone's just going to lamp you on. Carl. Yeah, Carl, Carl would lamp you. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, independent filmmaking film is, so, is so, so different. If you've got the respect of your crew, they'll do a good job for you. In fact, they'll go one better. And it's, and it's a privilege as well, you know, for somebody to give you actual money to, to say to you, I'm going to give you, no matter how big or small, I'm going to give you that money. You have to spend that accordingly. And, and, and that's not to say you're cutting corners because you have not much money. You, you've just got to put it to the right resource. And, you know, I think a lot of producers, are, are, you, you kind of hear it as an actor. I went on a lot of independent films and you turn up on set and you know that they've got X amount of money, but you can't see it anywhere on set. And you hear the horror stories, nobody's getting paid, everybody's been waiting for weeks and all these things. And then you hear the producers are off doing another film. This film hasn't been finished, but they're red light another one. And by the way, they just went on holiday for six yeah, weeks. And there's, they, they turn up in a lovely new... Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I think we're probably the best and and it's, it's a very <laughs> scary thing because, yeah. you know, as a producer, the, the one thing is that you have to put that budget on there and on, on Brogan especially that everybody was the, the HODs were we were all pretty much well we were all on the same it was all just split um, and yeah. there was no big fees up front for anybody because there was no money to give big fees and that's how it should be but even on a big budget it has to be done accordingly to what you're doing if, if you're producing why on earth you would want to just rake the money off the top and lose more money on making your film. I, I, I really don't get, and maybe that's just me being an old socialist. And but you've been a good producer. You know, well, maybe. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, you hear so many horror stories, and there are horror stories all over social media now. Um, and, you know, Craig didn't get paid for a broker. You know, in fact, spent his own personal money sorting out the crew when, the, when they all complained about the food. Yeah, well, yeah, one day, and, and he, kind of bought, he bought everyone pizza and fucking Nando's, you know, and that sort of came out of his, his but own that, pocket. But that, well. that is the thing, though. I mean, I, I did get that back, actually. I did get my... my yeah, the, course, but absolutely. you do you do get the... You, the things go wrong in film. And as a producer, you, you are there to make sure your crew and your cast are looked after. And so if, if a catering truck goes down one day and there is no food... You're taking everyone to dinner, whether you like it or not, yeah. and you'll find a fucking way to do it. <laughs> and thank God, Libya Rio. And yeah, and Libya Rio is a, an amazing line producer. And again, luckily, we had people like um, Kirsty Bell supporting us. So if anything did go wrong, I knew I always had somebody to go to, you know, and they could then go, right, you need to do this, and you need to do this now, and this is how it's going to... So, because you need that, you have to have these backups. But also, if I'd pocketed the cash... And then we would not have any money in reserve. And even on a small budget, you can have a reserve if you're not pocketing the cash. <laughs> yeah, if you were pocketing money, yeah. broken would be broken. No, it would have been called fucked. It would have broken. been called bro or bro. something. Yeah. <laughs> Brawn. Making sure these are still. I did one, one of these in San Diego, and the second camera ran out about 20 minutes before I finished talking to my now. A, a it's a long interview, audio actually, audio. isn't it? Yes, yeah, this is a long one. <laughs> what would, um, this is a rant. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, just, I started off just podcasting years ago, just chatting, what have you watched this week, what have you watched? Mm. And then I was uh, I watched a bunch of British films. I thought, nobody does a British podcast. It can't be that hard, there's not that many British films out there. Wrong. Tons of them, but not many people, or not as many people have heard of them mm. as they should be. So, you know, I've not heard the name Dominic Burns. I've not heard Paul Tanta and all these different names and David Hughes and stuff, so I prefer watching indie films now. Yeah. It's certainly British indie films, and then tell my reels to watch them. Do you know what yeah. Dom's doing at the moment? Dom is he's putting the final touches to announcing something to do with Jason News and Kevin Smith and stuff. Yeah. I'll send you a link later on. I got a press release a couple of months back because I saw him at the Derby Film Festival last year. So what, are you, what are you doing? It's been too long since our lives have been working on something. I'll let you know when it's ready. And then the press release came through. So he's some sort of movie with Jason Mewes. Jason Mewes is directing. So Dominic's producing this one. Ah, so okay. directing one, is that all right? We've got to move on. Yeah. Fire. 
busy chart. Well, I'll send you the press release. Yeah, no, it'd be nice to see that. Actually. Yeah, good. But what would um, 1996 our friends in the north, Craig Conway, think if you, you know, opened up the brochure, saw you so broken now. in? I know look at the dates and say, how fucking long? Yeah, 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 yeah. How long? Would that have scared you back then? If you go in like 20 years, 30 years, whatever, you're going to be. A I knew, I knew, I always wanted to get into it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've always. I've always had a desire to be behind and in front, and that's purely, I think, from the theatre basis. Because I, because I used to write and direct a lot of theatre and did a lot of devised theatre. That's how that's that was my drama school. Because I didn't go to a university or a proper drama school. I joined an ensemble, and and because I was touring with them, on and off for about well, I'd say about 15 years of theatre. You 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 cannot not be a collaborator, and then. You're always trying to keep yourself going, so you, you have to write. And I used to write for the Contact Theatre here in Manchester and direct it there and at the Lowry. And so I, I've always been fascinated by the whole thing, you know. And, and ultimately, you want, I've got stories I want to tell. So producing, to me, seemed a good way to learn as well how to direct because then I can see every, every part of production and know that if I ever get to the point where I am directing, I know what to be looking out for. And if those things aren't in place, I'm going to be asking, well, why aren't they not in place? You know, so, and it, and it works nice, but it's a collaborative thing. Producing is very collaborative. If, yeah, it should be, yeah. But, yeah, it, it's something I've always dreamt of doing, you know, so to, to actually be doing it is kind of cool. just... And how is it yeah. word of three hearts? It's all right because, you know, when I act now, that's a real privilege, and and having a director who, when when I know I can trust the director, so I don't have to think that he will direct me, and that's a beautiful thing to be able to go. Okay, enough of the producing, and I've got, you know, a production assistant or a line producer in the office, so I know when I go on set, they're looking at that. But also, when it comes to the cut, the editor and the director will look at that and go, actually. That's a bit shit. Can we do something with that to try and make them look better? <laughs> but uh, but that's not my. You know, I'll step out of things like that. If if I'm if I'm to put myself in something, then I can't be the judge of my own performance. That has to be direct, and you have to give that over to somebody. So you know, but I have no problem with that because you, you do get to a point where you go, well, I know what I do. I'm confident enough to know that I'm not the greatest actor, but I'm by far not the worst actor. But in the hands of a good director, I could be even better. So, so I can trust that. And, and again, it is down to trust. You have to let go, and you you can't assume you know everything. So, well, I think Dougie's one of his best performances. Uh, I mean, taking Broken off the table. <laughs> which performances are you most proud of, other than Broken, or put you in a corner like that? Uh, well, I think I think Romans. 1220 was, was a big really, one for me. That was really disturbing. Yeah. That got him, um, that I cast him in, in the fourth right that I was doing based on that. He invited me to, uh, it was a premiere. In, and, uh, in London? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere in London. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I don't need to see anything else. That's it. If he can pull off a performance like that, then. Yeah. And that, do yeah, that was a big change for me, that one. Because it shifts, doesn't it? I started watching it. I up with Edward Norton out of American History X. I don't like him. He's a bad guy. And so you watch the short film, and you're like, it's brilliant. Oh, give him a hug. It's like, been amazing. I, I'm all in a short amount of time as well. I think that, that was, yeah. Was. And Jeff Thompson's quite uh, a, an amazing man to work with as well. His writing. And I'd, I'd played Jeff in a theatre show on a one man show. So I've done two for him now. But that 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 was a that was a, a role that you as an actor kind of you know you covered those kind of oh my god I would love to be able to do something like that and and it, it had a lot of personal um, kind of resonance for me as well so that all that was wonderful I, I I'm proud of Dougie because of how we managed this project together but but I think every role that I've done I, when I look back I kind of go. I just feel really privileged that I've been able to have a career and like you say be able to do things that are completely different and and I hope I can keep doing that because because it is about being diverse and and being challenged you know um, and and I feel like I'm grown and I'm still learning 
Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't feel like I feel confident to attack anything, but I don't feel arrogant enough to say I know everything. You know, so um, yeah. I don't the, know. The, the other film I last night was four, oh, which I've seen yeah. three or four times now. Yeah. My other half and that, she'd never seen it. I'm like, I've been watching Craig Goldway films the past three days. I'm like, I'm going to watch this one. That's an amazing film. I still made it. That would make an amazing theatre. It, do you know what? That's yeah, exactly. Really. And so Paul Cornell. Strange, strange would make. Yeah, a, it would. Really good stage Paul Cornell is a brilliant writer, mm. an incredible writer, and I'm I, I'm kind of trying to get work with Paul more and more now. Um, but I I think Paul Cornell is a very unsung hero in that because the, the, again the film is very different to what the, the script really is and there, there is a lot of incredible uh, humour and uh, just this great theatricality to his writing um, I, I think Paul will be somebody I'll work with again the rest of my life I'll, I absolutely adore Paul's work brilliant man brilliant yeah but no, I think four would probably. I don't want to rank your films or whatever, but if somebody said give me half a dozen films of Craig's to watch, I think four would definitely be on it. No, that's good. I do think more comedy would be Well, Raymond Mers will be happy with that and John Language, because be, hey, you know what? We're still going to get a bit of sales. Well, well Kirsten was happy, wasn't it? Because I tweeted at you I about it. She jumped in the conversation. I'm like, how rude. Kirsten's she's another like, fantastic she actress as well. Martin Comston, Pertwee, yeah. you know, I mean. It, I've been very lucky to work with some brilliant actors. They're really lucky. But they've been lucky to work with you as well. So oh, they, cheers, dude. That's very nice. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? So, so, one final question is what can basically I do? I've still got a quick question about BBA8 as well so to learn a little bit more about that. But what can people like me do to make your lives easier? I keep talking about it. Yeah. I keep talking about it. I know you've been, uh, been you know, from the very beginning. Keep at it. Keep talking about the films that we're making, you know, um, and keep sort of tweeting. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the social media now. It is now, isn't it? And we're, yeah. you know, we're, we're heavily involved in all of the social media side of things anyway because it creates awareness. And if everyone else is retweeting and posting and doing this podcast and stuff, talking about it, it keeps it very much kind of fresh in the mind and. Um, yeah, just keep just keep helping us out that way. That's the best way you can do it. Well, that's yeah. why I branched out to video content. I'm I know, I've, 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 resi- I've held off doing it because I'm not one of these that's comfortable in front of cameras. Neither am I. I've kind of got a little bit better uh, now because I was on a podcast once and somebody asked me if I wanted to host an eight-hour Q&A panel for all these like Red Dwarf and the and I said, Doctor, I'm like, all right, and I thought, shit, what have I done? But I did it and I liked it, so I'm like, okay. That doesn't the ground doesn't swallow me up? So I'm kind I, of branching off into. I just, yeah, good. I just don't like being centre of attention in any way, shape, or form. Really? I'm behind the camera. I do what I do. You can hide. And- Q and A's and stuff. They scare the living shit out yeah. of me. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I did do. some in September, and I did six in a row, and it was Game of Thrones. Uh, what else? My three Star Wars ones. And I'm, with Q and A's, the same way with this conversation, I had no idea what I was going to say mm. before I start saying it. And that kind of works. One day I'll fall over. One day I'll be like, I've got nothing. <laughs> but for me, that kind of works. And I get scared to death afterwards. I'm like, what did I say that for? I've, I've never but, been one to be in front of the camera or centre of attention in any way. Do but, you have? Do you have to edit all of it and do all yeah, that as well? Do everything. Yeah. 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 I and mean, honestly, it's people like it's it's people like yourself who without your devotion to what we do as well, it it would be impossible to, to be able to have the access to fans, to, to even to hear about other work as well, because that's the thing, every, I think everybody thinks, you know, we you get, you're, you're pro- promoting our stuff, but you actually introduce us to more stuff than enough. I mean, I've, I've met other filmmakers because of the interaction you've had with us, and that that's amazing, you know, and I would never have had that before, so that what you're doing is, is supplying this community and keeping it growing and keeping it open. Mm. So we have we have this lovely collaboration going on of people discussing films and ideas and and it's great, man. I mean, the work you do is outstanding. It's great, it really is. So it's greatly appreciated. I enjoy it. I mean, I, with, like, you're <coughs> four years younger than I am, and since I was when you were born, I've just been in cinema. You're 26. 20. I'm 26. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 26. <laughs> I've been for many years. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I've always been a film fan, so when I started podcasting, I remember the first ever guest interview I did was with a guy called Nabil, who's been, you and only Falls Nurses fan? Yeah. The only guy yeah. who played Gary, the, the one who got stuck in the van, it was him, and I remember when he phoned me up, and I'm like, holy crap, which I still got the same feeling when I got Craig's voicemail message, I'm like... <laughs> Craig's left me a voicemail message. I'm keeping that forever. It's like, wow. So I never want to lose the film geek part of it. Uh, yeah, that's and a I good thing. Yeah, you've got to keep the professional you know, reviewers or whatever. And they just sit there with their iPad. They don't watch the film that they're on. And then they'll slate the film, give them a dodgy review. It's like, is he even watching? What the hell's the matter with it? They infuriate me that those people get paid for it. And A, they're not that bothered about films. So I love being the film geek who will just talk about films constantly, write about it, tweet about it, pollute everybody's timeline with links. Yeah, I mean, we'll always, yeah. we'll always give an honest approach, won't we? Yeah. Mm. You know, there's, there's no kind of glossing over what we do. Yeah. And you're right, you can't lose the geek in yourself, because oh, we, yeah. are, we are all nerds and geeks. Absolutely. We, we make film. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go through the crap you do yeah. <laughs> to, if you weren't that way inclined, you know. You, there, there's something obsessive about it, and something that there's that collector or that kind of researcher that, that makes you drive onto the next project the next year you want to find this that and the other and you know it, it, it's, it's a real it's a great thing to work in film and it's I mean, a it's real privilege first time I, was, I heard I was working with Majana you know what I did was yes I'm the director we need to do this what I really wanted to do is go can you sign my fucking <laughs> Marge's DVD <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what that's what I wanted to do did yeah. you get it signed though? no I didn't did you know? <laughs> But I did, we did get to try and skin us ahead again. Like, oh. <laughs> Mizzou, could you do us a favour? What? Can you take your skin off? Yeah. <laughs> Just to see what that looks like again. But now you're at the point where you could go, actually, I forgot to get you to sign this Martyrs DVD. Yeah, she would so as well. Do that yeah, of course you would, yeah. yeah. How come you never wanted me to sign I'm anything? too important now, though. <laughs> yeah. Get somebody else's, I get that Craig to get it yeah. signed or something. Could you sign me Broken Stick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah look yeah. at this, folks. Look at this. <laughs> now that is frustration, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> Nerves. It's broken. There you go. That should be a prop. You need to take a picture of that and tweet it. <laughs> yeah. Guess the name of the movie. Look what we've been talking about. Yeah. What? But I'll never lose the film geeks. What, stir it? <laughs> yeah, coffee stick. What? <laughs> Somebody on the IMDb said, if you ever see Craig, and they weren't speaking specifically to me, let him know that Saul from Doomsday has a cult underground following. So apparently... If really? Yeah. I've got to find there's out what this is. I want to follow me. I'm going to follow myself. <laughs> There's a website called villains.wiki and Saul's on there. He was a villain. Long live Saul. And there's like a little biography of him and everything. It's Is amazing. It? Yeah. Saul likes his meat medium rare. He likes dancing to the can can as well. Yeah, I did. Absolutely. That was, that was great, you know. And I, and I got a, a birthday card from, um, uh, what's it called? Fine Young Cannibals, good thing. I got a birthday card. Roland. Uh, yes. Birthday card. That song to go out on on that stage, that was amazing, and that that was my first night on set. Jeez, terrifying! That was wow. one hell of a, an opening night. It was so. unreal. It was just. Uh, I, I remember my heart. I was absolutely shitting myself. And Neil had said, "Just, just be a rock star." That was my yeah. note. And I'd seen the set being built for three days, and I'd went down and met the dancers and all them and said hello. And then I was standing in the wings of the, the stage thinking, oh, God, okay. And Neil said, we're just going to shoot the whole thing. You're just going to do it and keep going. And uh, and I was like, oh, shit, shit. And then Pert Week came up and just went, are you all right? Oh, yeah. He went, just go for it, man. And then the music started. And that was it. Just walked on. I was like, yeah, oh, this is great. It was every dream I'd ever wanted. I want to be a rock star. Were you seeing the listener? Stop. I'm getting exhausted. What, what, it, you, the the yeah, adrenaline yeah. was huge. And, you know, I, I think there was like seven or 800 extras standing there, motorbikes going off. I think there was about three or four cameras. So there was cranes and everything. And it was just, oh, man, it was intense. But it was just brilliant fun. And then we shot there for three days, just partied for three days. Amazing. Well, it's all great film. BB88. Yes. What is BB88? Okay, so BB88 is. Um, it's actually. It was set up to do independent film and to try and um, collaborate with the Chinese market as well and find first time filmmakers between the UK and China and see where we could make a, a, 
uh, collaborative effort and um, and and I basically uh, after doing Brogan I, I realized that there, there was stories out there that were not going to get kind of picked or seen if we didn't look into how we could do it so I, I kind of thought well three pictures I think it was 1.5 million three picture deal um, and then we would take it from there and see where it went so we, we did the first one which we just wrapped with um, uh, no no that's, that, that's uh, one I'm acting on with uh, Scott Mann um, uh, final score uh, but the, the first one was called Giant Land um, and that's with a, a writer director Yusuf Ali Khan uh, and he wrote the script with um, uh, Andy Porter, and uh, it's a that, that's a very kind of beautiful drama, really, a bit like Whistle Down the Wind meets Kez, uh, about a young boy called Ryan who is having a hard time at home with his mum and her new boyfriend, um, and his real father. He he doesn't really know who he is, but he's heard that he was somebody who was foreign to their state, and. Um, while he's fantasizing about who his real father might be and he's living this kind of lonely world he he stumbles across um, a Syrian refugee living and taking shelter in uh, an old shipping container and they, they, these two worlds meet and they help each other the, the kind of refugee helps him to grow up and, and start becoming a man and he in turn helps this man to stop the resentment and bitterness and try and get to where he needs to be as well and so this this fusion of post Brexit Britain and this beautiful drama like a father son story comes out and and um, and hopefully uh, we'll we'll find where that's going as we go through the post. Now we've just hit in, uh, into the edit, so we'll find where that is. But beautiful cast: Haley Squires from I Daniel Blake, and um, we've got Joshua Herdman from Harry Potter, and Goran Bogdan. And a, and a lovely, brilliant, aspiring little actor, um, uh, which is uh, Mitchell. Hang on, Mitchell Lawrence. Ah, I can't. Uh, I'm going to get it the wrong way around. No, hang on. Mitchell. Mitch. Doesn't matter. I'll find. I'll find it. I can't because I'm going to say his name the wrong way around. I don't want to get it the wrong way around. But this, but this kid is extraordinary. He's he's just my God. He's good. Uh, and I've never seen a young boy do a performance like this. I mean, he, he's, he really is incredible. You've got, can you get his name up on Twitter for me? This is the first of the three films. It's the first of the three. So then, we go, then we're going to do one in China uh, with a Chinese cast um, and, and uh, see how that works. And then we're going to do one which is a Chinese and English. But, but BB-88 now is not... It's not just going to be the Chinese investment. It's going to open its doors to other investors as well, um, and also the more of the British side of filmmaking. Uh, and possibly that's where maybe Smith and Conwell do another film in BB88. Or, but we're we're just trying to open it up. But but it is devoted to doing independent um, features, really. You know, and, and of various genres, whatever. Various genres and and various budgets, to be honest. So, yeah. How can people get their made, films made? You know, I know for Giant Lab, it had been some time for, for, for him kicking his scripts around. and Seven years. Seven years he'd waited. Like seven years. Seven years for me as well. Yeah. So Yusuf had been working on many shorts and things. And he'd done, he'd done one feature. But, but it, it, I think he had a really, uh, just a, a horrible experience anyway. And he didn't like what, what happened to him. Uh, and I don't think the film ever really went anywhere or did anything so this script had been with him for a long time it got Tribeca nominated um, but unfortunately I think the budget was way too high for it so when I when I came upon it I said it needs to reduce it needs to come right down and uh, we worked that together and then uh, it, it's a really ambitious project but I, I think we have something special there and um, we just have to see what the, what the journey comes but yeah you know to give somebody a chance is is an important thing actually I've had plenty of them so you know you, I, absolutely yeah whilst entertaining people like me <laughs> is up please let me get you his name because <laughs> I'd kill myself if not no signal no signal. signal is terrible I don't think I've ever had a good signal no, I haven't been here 
So have you not you what managed to check out that many other films during here? No, the BBC Special, I mean, I'd love to. I'd love to watch them all. Yeah. Uh, I'm a massive film geek. Uh, I'd love to watch them all, but you just, you can't, because we're, like, doing Working. interviews and press and all that kind of thing, so... Um, no, I, love, I, I, I wanted to at Fry Fest as well. There's a couple of films I really wanted. There's a couple here that I really want to see, but... You, just, you come here, you spend the day, and it's all about your film, Broken, blah, blah, blah. Um, you, you're doing... Q and A's and like interviews, yeah. and you you know you just don't get a chance to do anything. Nothing at all. I'm going to go to Fright Fest next year. I've never been. You've uh, never been to Fright Fest. Been to, Fright Fest to me, it's the it's the cost of accommodation there. Right but you're going to be there for five days. It's going to break me. What's his name? Mitchell. Lawrence Norman. So you're right. You're I was, but right. I was worried I was going to get it wrong. And then, and then it, it knocked me for six. You Mitchell Lawrence right. Norman. Mitchell Lawrence Norman, best yeah. up and coming actor, incredible kid. He got it right in the first place. He's second guessing himself. I love, I love he's, second guessing he's, he's incredible. <laughs> he really is. A, there he is. A, a little lad there. He's absolutely cool. fantastic. My God. And he's just about to do another movie out in Bulgaria now with um, with uh, Giles Alderson called The Dare yeah so that's a, quite a dark horror he's doing so that's quite good for him he started in drama he's a creeping over to the horror yeah yeah, yeah they were, they were you, I mean, I've seen this Grim Festival horror, horror festival but IMDb broken thriller drama what do you think of it as personally <laughs> do you know what it, we were um, we were worried about it showing at a, at a horror festival but it's, it's, it's a new breed of horror. So, I mean, Fright Fest uh, and Grim Fest tout themselves as a horror film festival, but in actual fact, they're horror, sci fi, thriller. Uh, and like they were talking earlier about crowd pleasers, they're going to always have the, the schlock horror kind of crowd pleasers. And then a film like Broken comes along. And it's always been the question all along is it? Is it horror? Is it not? Well, it's whatever you want it to be. Is it horror? To me, it was horror because it's um, the care work I lived in. And it was something I, it, I was completely taken out of my comfort zone by doing that job. I had to do the job, you know, I had to earn a bit of money. Um, so I took that job, but it, that was horror for me. It's horror for other, all the carers that come to me and say, thank you for telling that story. It's a horror film for them. Um, but others to see it as a drama. I mean, it's great. There is no actual definition for the film. Um, at all. Sometimes people will go, how do we sell this thing? If we can't put a label on it, how do we sell it? But from well, yeah. yeah. a film fan point of view, I, I like to make my own mind. And it gives, yeah. it gives the distributors an option, actually. Where, you know, where, I mean, the, the imagery of the posters and stuff is horror. Uh, and you know the tagline is, is horror, isn't it? But we can quite easily go to another festival. I don't know. Let's throw can in there or something, and we can call it something else. We can sell it as something else because it is. So okay, so it's an interesting drama with a little bit of a twist uh, and a little bit of horror, uh, kind of towards the end. So it, yeah, it's real life horror. It's a new breed of horror film that we're that we're, that we're interested in. I think everything we're going to do is going to have this intense character development. We, that we love doing so it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a new breed of horror so it's everything <laughs> it's a war film I look forward to watching it's it <laughs> I shall be watching it soon but yeah actually it's a war film yeah. <laughs> between two people yeah, yeah. it's three civil war films so many genres you need to change your to be categorized <laughs> yeah. what have you got guys planned what have you got planned for the rest of your day now Getting back to London. Back to London. Driving back to London. Yeah. Sounds boring. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to stay around. I know. And, I um, watch do. a couple of films. But I'm, I'm tempted. But. I think I've got all the time. But it's short films from two o'clock till. That's four. that's yeah. kind of what I wanted to see showcase. as well. But I just got to get back. Children and all. Yeah. But non-film life. Yeah. 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 Which, I, yeah, I was going to say actually as well. Thank, thank God. I think that's one one thing that you probably have to do a lot of is have a normal life outside of it. Because if, even though we are all a bit obsessed by it, without without that, I think you do go a bit mad. You know, because you, you you could just go on and on and on in film without you know you you create these little bubbles for a period of time. But um, 
I think maybe it, maybe it's because the older you get, you get a bit wiser and kind of go, oh well, if this film doesn't change the world, yeah. we'll still be all right, yeah. you know. But yeah. I think that's the thing as well. Don't don't take yourself too seriously. You, you know, allow yourself to enjoy the journey. Oh God, yeah. 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 Just get a bit. That's the movie part. Yeah. That's the part you need to just touch on the shoulder and go, that thing you just did, really cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so when you're like 95 years old, you go, let's just replay some of those. Yeah, movies. absolutely. So. Yeah, when you can't see the cinema screen anymore, you can play it in your own head. Yeah. <laughs> it's got, I remember the time when I was dancing to the can Yeah. <laughs> you know, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Have a very safe journey back then. Thank, thank you, man. Pleasure to meet you. Yes. Yeah. I'll do. keep you updated with the progress of this. Yeah, lovely. I'll keep harassing you on Twitter and stuff. No, no <laughs> problem. Anytime, mate. Cool. Yeah, Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, you. John is at what we call the turning point. Ain't no fool. I'm the cripple who is old school. He's fighting against what his life has become. Sun, shine. I'm the cripple with the broken spine. You have to make sure that he can live his life like he would have if he hadn't had the accident. I am here to make a new life for myself, Edward. Look, it's not long now. Another few days and we can move you, okay? Try and put yourself in his shoes. Every day I try to put myself in his shoes. I can't help but be in his shoes. But they have all night parties with his friends. They get drunk, they put him in a corner. Dougie is just taking advantage of him. Are you sure you're cut out for this? This is not going to make you go away. You're making a mistake. Trust me, John. Mr. Energy Subcontractor. Come into my yard to try and privatize the matter. Searching and scheming for the cripple's money. But it's in the land of milk and honey. Is there any just subcontractor? He said it was going to be just a few more days. It was a few too many.